been uh, properly warned, posted at three places and on the website and emailed to interested parties. So we can go ahead um, with this meeting. Sounds like there's some more people. They always wait till the last few minutes. Uh -huh. Um, does anyone have any additions to the posted agenda that they want to add? We'll post it or not? Join you. Am I posted or not? I'm not sure. No, um, I think you put that on specifically. No. On okay. Site. No. So okay. So um, the minutes for the last meeting, Pat was not there, and Tom is not here tonight, so we're going to table these until Tom is at a meeting so we can um, work with those. Hey, Mark, we just, we, we just started asking if anyone had any additions to the agenda. Did you have anything to add, or are you just here? No, nope, I will speak, Tom. I have some things to talk about. As they come up, as they come up, okay. That are that are already on the agenda. Pardon? That are already on the agenda. No, it's just a matter of the guests. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. So we um, we're going to start before our regular meeting with a uh, public hearing on the um, Vellamont Trail. The um, how do you? say this grant, what is it? It's a resolution for a Vermont Community Development um, grant, which is going to be a um, between, there's no one here from Hancock or Granville, I don't think, tonight, but we're going to be applying for this on behalf of the three towns in support of the study in the Bellamont Trail, and Angus McCusker is here to speak on that. Yeah, so uh, Hancock and Granville uh, Sec Board both um, signed a letter of support on behalf of their communities. Um, it's just a planning grant, so there's still a lot more questions and answers at this point. Um, the if we were to get this grant, the hope is that you know we can engage the community further, and see what the community wants to see, or doesn't want to see. Um, I know the town of Hancock Sec Board expressed uh, wanting to see the trail come near the village community, um, so stuff like that. Um, I think anything else I should add to the project in general. Um, yeah, anybody have any questions well, about it? I guess we're again? here if anyone has any questions, you would see a good one to, to answer those. So, uh, if, um, if, oh, uh, how specifically uh, is this going to affect the visual area? Yeah, so the uh, Robinson IRP, um, that stuff is uh, undergoing review still. Um, so the stuff, I don't know if you've been following that at all, what we'll propose over there. Um, yeah. At this point, that's kind of what, but we don't really know outside of the Robinson IRP. We don't really know where. Um, so somewhere from here headed north, you know, through Granville, Hancock and Granville towards the uh, Memorial Valley uh, would be the hope. Um, whereabouts, I'm not sure. Um, you know, there are a lot of things we have to consider, you know, uh, wilderness areas, places we shouldn't be building trails, um, so we just want to be mindful of that. Um, you know, it's supposed to be, the idea would be a uh, multi-use uh, design for mountain biking, but uh, great for running, hiking, um, walking. Um, the idea is that rather than a trail just being up there in the mountains, it would come down out of the mountains, engage the community, people stop, get food, snacks, uh, whatever. And, head back on up out into the and uh, also the idea with partnership with Vermont Hut Association uh, would be a hut to hut network um, so looking at existing uh, places that might be interested in hosting a hut uh, for people to stay at um, not necessarily meaning we're going to build new huts everywhere um, yeah just a concept at this point you got any any kind of idea of what kind of traffic you're going to be anticipating and that's part of the uh, grant planning grant is to find out. Um, you know, it also includes a uh, economic impact study. Um, it would potentially bring in some visitors from out of state. Um, so typically, a lot of people drive up and down 100. They just maybe stop quick and but head on. You know, there's nothing really that draws people to this area to recreate right here in the valley, so to speak. Um, so that could be an opportunity. 
Um, it'll also be an opportunity for all of us locals, residents, to have something right here from town and be able to hike up along the river somewhere or up into the mountains. Um, the ranger station, there's some existing uh, trails that we, we were saying, Rochester Randolph Area Sports Trail Alliance um, built last fall. Um, so if you hike up there, you'll get an idea of what the trail is. Uh, we hosted a 5K walk run event earlier in the spring to kind of get people out there and enjoy it. How many people it. showed up for that? How many people? Yeah. Um, I remember how many people out like 50 or so. The, yeah. yeah. It was about 50. Yeah. <clears throat> so it was a free event, you know, just to get people out and enjoy it. It wasn't really publicized, you know, it wasn't, the idea wasn't to be a big event, um, but just rather something for people to do on National Trails Day. Which is a, is, is uh, teaming up with like bass or something back explored? I mean, something with bass, yeah. And, and that's it seems like they don't use it in the summer. The bridges yeah. are where the bridges are needed. The bass trails uh, are a great opportunity in some places, but not every place. A lot of bass trails are pretty steep, um, which is, can be impossible sometimes to bike up. Um, and so, you know, some areas might be in the winter frozen, but in the summer it's pretty wet. So we don't want to create further erosion and stuff like that. So we're looking at areas where we can uh, utilize uh, forest service roads or some forest service roads that we can utilize um, a lot of existing trails. Rather than creating all new trails, we want to utilize what's available. It's just a matter of linking everything together. Um, yeah. I just I have a question about a lot of, that, a lot of these trails are on private use, uh, private land. Um, a majority, but I think at this point it's been proposed for the uh, the Forest Service um, public lands. Um, but yeah, there is an opportunity where there might be some connections. Um, we do have some landowners that have expressed uh, interest in helping make those connections happen. Um, but that would be part of the planning grant is to explore uh, getting the community involved. Um, you know, something we were thinking about doing in the spring is kind of hosting like a, a kickoff meeting, get the community involved, um, maybe a Pierce Hall or something, and just get everybody's input on um, concerns, you know, make sure we address those. Um, yeah. Well, when you're on private properties, going from one property to another, you're getting the uh, use value of permission. Is that correct? Yep. Because they have to have a whole uh, design of what's being used on the land. Yeah, we definitely have a, a landowner permission form that we would use with a, if we were to propose something on private land. With the county forest. Yeah, include everybody, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yep. I guess, does this study um, include what the impact would be on our fire and rescue? Is, is it going to be part of this study as well? And we would that's have the results yeah. of that? Um, you know, that's something we could add to it. Um, that's a really good point. Um, you know, right, right now we rely heavily on volunteer. Um, I know members who, you know, working with the Rochester Fire Department, myself included, uh, volunteer search and rescue. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we need to know, maybe based on the economic impact study, what kind of traffic we bring to. Okay, what does this mean for, you know, plus, search plus and rescue efforts? Plus, these cuts will—they'll have campfires at night, so we would want to actually the fire department. Yeah. Yeah. So in, in regards, now that Dan's here, maybe he can answer it. Um, in terms of coordination with the Robinson project and the studies of what's happening there, is this has come up, has this been included already in the Robinson study or is this an addition after, after that? How, how does that fold in with the, uh, the visions of the Robinson project of um, you know, timber management and recreation and all that? Um, well, I'm not here to represent Forest no, Service. No, you're not, okay, but you might have it. But I, um, and Angus probably knows as much as I do about the sections of trail that are within the Robinson project yeah. that may or may not be part of the Belmont. That's what I'm just trail. curious if it was, yeah. to what extent it was. Some of it certainly could be, like the Chittenden Brook mm -hmm. stuff. Um, yep, yeah. certainly could be. So some of it may be nested within the Robinson project. That seems like it would make sense to have the, both energies working on the same project yeah. instead of reinventing the yeah, wheel. Sure. Yeah. yeah, just to be clear, we're still waiting on you know, like approval, decision, uh, part of Robin's IRP, so that could not happen too. So we, we might need to explore other options uh, if that didn't go through.
Does anybody else have any input before we close this um, hearing? Then uh, thank you, Angus. And um, I'd like to um, move to pass the res resolution applying for the, um, the municipal planning grant to dig further into it. I will second it. Second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Where are you applying to? to is it to the state? And the, the municipal planning grant you're applying for that grant. Where is the grant coming from? Grants grant coming from, from yeah. Two Rivers? Should be on there. You can see it on the agenda. It's the agency of development, isn't it? And within that is where the municipal planning grants come from. I so from that, um, the state agency, though. It's the state agency. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your signature. Yes. Yeah, it's Vermont Community Development Program. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On to reopening the. Um, oh, oh, oh. He's got one question. <laughs> so we'll be notified step by step. The board will be notified, and we in turn will be notified step by step along this process. Is that correct? Yeah, well, I'm sure we'll notify everybody if, the, if we receive the grant at all. And then, um, you know, <laughs> outside of the, you, the process, you know, we do want to engage the community. So it's something sometime next spring, I think, would be where we have an event or something to get everybody. Um, and we can certainly put a notice up, make sure everybody's aware of it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, moving on to um, guests, John, Ashley, um, is that you? Yep. Yeah, we reopened the select board meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, you want to give us a rundown of the, the change orders here? Sure. Um, would you like me to stay right here or does We're it matter? Do you want to get better? Um, <laughs> if you need to run, you're not a good spot. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Uh, so, do you have a copy of my memo? Okay. So, uh, I'm here to give an update on and ask for some input on the financial status of the rock, the wastewater re reconstruction, wastewater system reconstruction. Uh, the project is, uh, for people who aren't familiar with it, the, the what's called site number three of the wastewater disposal system is being rebuilt. Uh, this is the leach field down below the school. Uh, the project was bonded for uh, $500,000. Hebert Construction has been doing the work. Uh, their base contract price is $358,078. And the initial contract was signed with one alternate included, which was $6,000. Um, we've looked at, uh, the, the initial question to me was, can we, add in the uh, re remote telemetry unit that is proposed for the pump station at site one. And uh, to give you that background, of, uh, what's at site number one is a pump station that uh, has a control panel that's right there at the, at the station. And if there are any uh, issues with or need to check the pump station, um, requires that you, you go to the site and we'll let you that Terry goes to the site and, and checks it and uh, uh, this remote <coughs> telemetry would uh, make some modifications to the control panel so that it works with an, ad, an added panel with a uh, small radio antenna and 
uh, that would allow the system to be checked from online, anywhere you could be online. So on a computer or on your phone or whatever. <laughs> and uh, the, what you'd be able to check is the, uh, whether the pump, which pumps are running, um, the condition of the pump seals, which is a part that's really important to the pump continuing to work, um, and uh, pump run times, which are an indicator of if you might have any issues going on at the pump station. Um, and that, uh, that was included in our original um, design and uh, price, the price in uh, Hebert's for site one. For site one, yes, was, uh, and, and we didn't put put it in Hebert's initial contract because we wanted to see where the project would be ending up and whether there was room to add this in or not. And that be, the cost of this was uh, add in for site three. No, site one. Adding site in the site one, one telemetry. Okay. Right, site one. The site one uh, telemetry, site three telemetry was included in the okay. authorized at right. the beginning. And uh, uh, the and Hebert's uh, price when they bid on this, the telemetry at site one was uh, $10,000. <clears> so we've looked at whether that could be added into the project at this time or not. Um, we have some changes during the course of the project. The uh, depth of the excavation of the existing leach field was around five feet, which was deeper than we were expecting. And some of the material above the leach field needed to be removed as contaminated soil also. Um, Excuse me, is that on site three? Yes. Yes. Uh, so that, so the three quantities associated with site three's leach field, which are the excavation of the bed, mound sand to build up underneath the bed, the the new bed, and um, and then the disposal of what was taken out, those all are higher than um, than we had included for the quantities which means their uh, Hebert's price in the end will be running over on those three items by just shy of $37,000. Um, we have three items that we know are not going to be used, which are $9,400 that won't be needed or installed. So that's a deduction from the, what the original uh, contract was. And uh, we have a few additional items that were needed. Um, a change in the, a change in how the uh, control panel is mounted and the post size. Um, we were able to avoid needing an easement to have the driveway go to the tanks at site three by having the uh, having an access road built. Uh, on the river side of the of the leach field, and that was an additional cost, but it was in saving in uh, avoiding the easement cost. Um, and then some additional electric needs at the site one pump station. And so those are outlined in here. Uh, when you take the total project costs, which things that you're that are supposed to sort of count against your bond amount. That's a separate spreadsheet that's attached. <clears throat> um, if all of that's included and we add add the uh, remote telemetry at site number one um, and we include what was in there for allowances for legal costs and the town's management of the project. Those, those are 11,000 and the uh, remote telemetry at site one is 10,000. The project would go over the bonded amount by just shy of 21,000, 520,955. Um, 
you, the the town has the select board has the authority to um, increase the bond if you choose to by up to seventy five thousand for unanticipated costs without rebonding. That's one choice. Um, another way it could be done would be to not do the telemetry under this contract. Potentially hire uh, a champlain to make the modifications and do the work out of your uh, sewer fund or something like that, and then not put your administrative and uh, legal costs into it, and you would still be, you still should be under the bonded amount. Um, and there are probably a few options in between also. And I don't have a strong recommendation either way. You, you have a contractor here. Uh, they're, they are what I would, Terry and I would would say they're, they are behind schedule. Um, they're supposed to be done work by September 1st. And um, uh, the leach fields are not finished. And there's a good amount of work to, to finish them. They're, they're largely there, but the, uh, the piping in the fields needs to be put in and tested, and then then the whole uh, leach field area needs to be finished, topsoil and seeded and mulched, and there's a quite a bit of site cleanup at the end. Uh, so the the likelihood of being done by September 1st is that, that it's not, I don't. Yeah, I think they're behind that. <laughs> um, so, what does that trigger if they don't finish by September? Well, I think we have, um, I think we have some uh, uh, an amount in there for uh, daily liquidated damages if the town chooses to. Uh, I think there is a daily rate that could be charged against the project. Normally, it's to cover additional engineering costs being there for to manage the project longer. We're not we're not going over at this point, and uh, I don't think you would end up running into any extra engineering costs on the project uh, because we've been able to use uh, somebody very local to to do the construction review. Um, We've been efficient with our budget, and uh, so I think we're in good shape there. Um, but my intention is to follow up from this meeting, talk to them tomorrow about the schedule. And the part of the reason for the schedule being finished by September 1st was not to conflict with with school. So that's uh, what we're running up against. My my big concern is larger vehicles going in and out. Um, and then just the attraction of, hey, there's some big equipment uh, that I'd like to climb on uh, <laughs> or, or run, <laughs> depending on the kid. <laughs> um, so, Terry, do you have any um, input? I, think, I don't think we should do the talent officer now. I think we'd be better off to ourselves. Yeah. We might need to save a little bit. If you're going to be running late, would he just do it? So what, the 10,000? I doubt it. I don't think. As opposed to being charged on a daily basis for right. what their overage is? <laughs> I, I would hope they won't, they won't run that far over. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they're, they're in sight if they could put some, put some more people on and get it wrapped up. It won't be that far off, but. John, do you have an estimate of if they did that, if they really concentrate on getting this finished, what's the estimated time in the point of view for completion? I don't see a reason they couldn't be completed by the end of the following week. Okay, so we're all, we're all looking at a week to 10 days. You suspect at this time? Yeah, no, actually, working day is probably like four or five. Yeah. Okay, so you're thinking like by Friday the 6th? Right. I mean, this is just me guessing over something I don't have control over. <laughs> I, I can't, uh, you know, I don't, 
going to tell the contractor what to, yeah. how many people to put out there and that kind of thing. Does that include the, the cleanup part of it, the seating, mulching, and all that stuff, or is it just the actual? Well, there will there will probably be some of the. I, I think they could have things demobilized. Um, oh, probably the week after. Long. But uh, the, it won't take them long to demobilize. But there's there's they're going to be things. Areas we want reseeded or raked, and um, yeah, that could linger past that week. Yeah. If, if well, it depends on how well they do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, the main thing I think is to get all that big equipment and the really yes. heavy duty work done. Yeah. You know, they have to, you know, see the mulch that's kind of like going to have. Yeah. So, yeah. the long and short of this, what is the bottom line different from what? One is they're bonded for, and two is what they're contracted for. I'm a little bit confused. The contract is different than the bonded amount, I realize. Yes. The, uh, the total bond includes preliminary engineering, final engineering and permitting, our, our work during bid and construction, and, um, and the, uh, all the, the contract work. The, the contract work comes out to about Four hundred and one thousand. If we don't do the alternate, I, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Did yeah. you say four hundred and one? Four hundred and one. Four hundred and one. Right. If you if you took out the uh, telemetry, it's site one. What was the engineering total? You're over a hundred. Um. Right. Let's see here. I don't have a subtotal there, so I get And you did test bits before this? Yes. And you weren't able to determine then that you had to dig deeper? No, what we saw in the test bits um, Looked like it was going to be more localized right around the pipes. There were a lot of pipes that we exposed that uh, the the uh, the bio material, the black stuff mm -hmm. around the piping, was really it didn't extend far into the leach field. So um, underneath the leach field, we didn't think would go much deeper. And um, the thing in hindsight that I uh, I think maybe we should have thought about was it, we did see, you know, some areas where the grass growth had changed. So I think mm -hmm. the pushing above the leach field, uh, knowing now that both what we saw, you know, in the excavation and, and having seen that before, I should have I should have uh, realized above the leach field was going to be. They had a couple of clay pockets. So how many extra yards do you think you had to take out? Well, it comes out to about two feet deeper than we expected. How many yards approximately is that? Oh, sorry. 808 yards of additional disposal bed. 808 yards of extra that excavation. So that's certainly going to add to the time necessary to do this. Yes, they could die. Uh, they haven't applied for an extension of the contract mm -hmm. time, but yes, I think it is. But they, if you, if you didn't know, it would be hard for a contractor to know that. Yes. Yep. I'm not, I don't, I'm not a fan of doing liquidated damages on a project. And we normally try to work with the contractor on uh, when they do apply for a change order or we do the balancing change order even. We can, we can uh, extend the time under the contract also if, the, if that's what the town uh, wants to do. And uh, I think it would be reasonable here. You didn't, you didn't spec out wash stone for this project? Yes, we you did. did. Yeah. What is it that they were rescreening for stone? Well, what they brought, I think, uh, I think what they uh, ran into was they were using trucks that they had hauled sand in, and not, and that was contaminating their their stone. They didn't have a, they weren't transporting it in a clean truck. Because that's kind of putting us back to the original problem. Yes. Was the inferior material in the ground. Yes. We had them remove what had fines in it. Just and by then. screening? 
Uh, I mean, so this stone isn't really washed then if it had sand in it. I it may have been know. washed at one point, but once you put sand in it, it's not a washed stone. Right. Uh, I don't know if they screened the stone. I know we told them it couldn't have the fines in it that we saw, and they removed it. Yeah, they screened all the stone. They screened it all. Pretty much. And I don't know if they, I don't know if they then washed it again. No, they didn't. I've, from what I've seen, there's out there, there's not, the fines are in it anymore. Yeah, you wouldn't want them. No. Uh, but it sounded like you were concerned that they hadn't well, washed it. To get well, to no, I'm stone. just, okay. To, to screen stone to get all your sand out is, um, do you really get all your sand out? Right. It looks good. It doesn't, I don't see, finds in it anymore. Did you see any uh No, I went they did it when it was really dry, so it really helped a lot. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean it still is not washed, but so part of their running over is a result of, of that mistake on their their part. Yes. Too. Right. Yeah. That that slowed them down a little bit. Yes. So if we don't do the telemetry on the um the second telemetry telemetry station that is what eleven thousand dollars what are the other associated costs with that it doesn't just drop the the total project by only eleven thousand uh, yes the telemetry only drops by ten thousand dollars and if you don't apply for if you don't include your any legal or administrative in Town, town project management costs, like um, Joan or Terry's time or something like that, is what that's for. That's another 11,000 that's in the total project costs right now. That those two together would be $21,000 that would keep you under the bond amount, just, just barely. <laughs> yeah. You're thinking now? that um, telemetry the later project yeah I thought uh, the guys they at yeah. Champlin yeah well I'm uh, I don't mind keeping it at or under the, the bonded amount it seems like a, a good idea yeah. so, yep. uh, there's no pressing reason to push ahead with the other, what do you think? Yeah, I'm more for that. In, in I that. think that the uh, that's, that's what the voters would want us to, yeah. want us to do at this point in time. Um, also, it will be noticed uh, that it's going over time-wise right after Labor Day when everyone's dropping their kids off at school. So. Um, can, can they make up some of the time by working through Labor Day? I will. Uh, I will Taking bring up that the, into account. I'll be that's, bringing up the schedule with them yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, that's, uh, that's three days that maybe we wouldn't have children around. Um, right. So, uh, other than that, I'm, I'm fine with taking those things out. I, I just would like to see it tied up and done as soon as possible. Yes. Yeah. Well, I have a question about the payoff of the bond. Uh, how long a period is the bond for? 30 years, isn't it? Pardon? 30. Years. 30. Mm -hmm. uh, how much? Pretty sure it's 30. 30. 30. 30 years. 30 years? Yes. And it's not being roped into the existing uh, uh, water and sewer uh, payoff that is nearing. No, this is separate. No. It's yeah. going to stay separate forever. But there's also a significant. Um, there was uh, some grant money that are, we had to bond for the whole amount, but that the town is not paying back the whole amount. There is. A grant. I understand. Yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. Right. But we had to okay. spend it before we could get the reimbursement. Right. Yeah. And this bond is with Farmers Home. Vermont Bond Bank. Who? Vermont Bond Bank. Vermont Bond Bank. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Mon Bon Bank. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, so we communicate that? Yes. Thank you for coming and laying it out for yes. us again. Yep. I yeah. thought it was easier to no, yeah, cover in person. Easier, and, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. If we don't have a meeting this week, I'll stop and we will be in the Okay, so um, that would segue right into Joan, your updates. Uh, let's see, the first thing is um, the last meeting you asked me to look into the use of wrap, uh, recycled asphalt pavement, that's what I learned that means, because uh, we have a pile of it. Um, John was talking about the last meeting and there was a question about whether it should be used or, or not. So um, I had some correspondence with uh, an engineer guy at, um, in, at the state who's part of uh, Vermont Local Roads Program. And I think, did I, I think I gave you a copy of this email, but I just want to summarize the highlights because you probably haven't had a chance to read it. Um, Maybe zero accidents and put it there. Anyway, you can give us. I'll make sure you get it. Anyway, it says that uh, I'll just read a little bit of it. It says the studies throughout the country show benefit to blending wrap with surface gravel. The greatest benefit seen is dust suppression, which was also a topic of conversation last time. As the residual oils in the wrap hold on to the fine particles in the surface aggregate. Um, so that partially answers the, the other thing you asked me to research, which is dust control. Um, and then he makes some recommendations if you want to try and use wrap mixed in with gravel. He says, for one thing, you should have what he calls a sieve analysis done, which I guess gets, tells you what size particles you have. And there's a state testing facility that will do it for a nominal fee, like 100 bucks or something, just to get a bag, I think, and they'll do it for you. Um, and then he makes some recommendations about, you know, maximum particle size and how much, what percentage of the wrap should be mixed in with gravel to make it the most useful. Mm -hmm. what, what percentage is that? Um, it says, if the 200 particle size exceeds 50%, I'm sorry, 15% of the overall weight of the virgin aggregate, in other words, the, the gravel, the basic gravel, there will still likely be dusty conditions because this is too much for any aggregate to perform well. So it's, if it's a particle size of 200 or larger, I guess, and if it's more than 15% of the overall weight of the gravel, then that's too much. Um, and it says many of the studies have done, that have been done on aggregate blend of 50% 50, 50 wrap to 50% gravel with calcium chloride applied also um, seems to be the best, but he recommends some, and nothing less than 20 to 30% wrap, so maybe as much as 50% wrap and 50% gravel. And then it also said that the best results were realized when the material was blended in a pug mill rather than blending it on the road when you're putting it down. So I guess it gets all mixed in, a, you know, in advance of taking it up in a big pole. A pug mill. <laughs> and John can tell you what a pug mill is because I don't really know. Is. It's some kind of grinder, I guess. Did you see Pete it's kind of a grinder, I believe. <laughs> and you would have to run your process material back through it to mix it. You'd be taking something that was already crushed down and running it back through. I, I don't think it would be cost effective to do it that way. Excuse me, Jim. If you were crushing a raw material, then yes, but it's not a, we don't have a raw material. We already have the three quarter gravel. So I think bucking, bucket mixing it when we load it in a truck is probably the best answer economically. You can still break it apart right now. You can still get a, get a bucket load out of it. <laughs> You can still get a bucket load out of it. It's it's sitting there. It's it's hard again. Correct. Well, you, you would mix it with the bucket loader. <coughs> okay. A bucket of this and a bucket of that. Mm -hmm. Kind of like making a cake. <laughs> scoop of this and a scoop of that. Excuse 
Excuse me, I didn't hear that. What do you say? Pug Miller. 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 Pug so you need to have a roller that you pull behind. It'll be all the to really pack it down. So maybe it's not something you do now, maybe something you consider in the future. Or not. Are you, are we you got a question this? back there? Yes. It sounds from what Joan is talking about that this is more using it as a surface material and the discussion was that this prior had been used as a subsurface. Correct. So, so as part of this whole discussion that should be included, it seems that the subsurface is creating the problem. If using it as a surface works, then it's a different thing than we were talking about at the last meeting. But it did cure the problem of mud. Yes, yes. I think a lot of people would just as soon have a little bit of dust on their way home and be able to well, I, still I don't think you were here last week or no, last I week, saw it, but, but you saw you saw how they were. There's but I mean, there. this may cure the dust of the surface if it's used as a surface right. material. This is also an issue of just we had a pile of this stuff sitting around. Should right. we use it or should we not? So we're just partially answering both of those questions, but not fully. Okay. Thank you for digging into that. Okay. Yeah. It's fun. Um, the other question was about the possibility of reducing the speed limit on bingo and you asked me to find out what that would entail and how do you, you know, legally reduce the speed. And also Better Back Roads came to the rescue on that one as well. Um, I read the orange book first and it was not very helpful and it was really not meant for, you know, a road like this as opposed to some more urban setting. So, um, but the one thing that was confirmed is that it does need to be a town ordinance if you want to change it. Right. We have to have and what you have to do is it's not, the Orange Book calls for an engineering study, but in this case that's way more than what's needed. And what is suggested or pretty much required is that we ask Rita at, uh, at Two Rivers to do what's called a traffic study for us, basically to go out and set those counter traffic counters up and over some prescribed period of time, figure out how, mu how much traffic there is and what I guess the typical speed is. And then based on that data, they make a recommendation of whether the speed or it should be the same as it is, or reduced or whatever. So um, I'd like to know whether you'd like me to ask Rita to put that on her list of to-do items. Don't know how soon she would be able to do it, but she could do that. I I can find out if there's a fee or if they just do it yeah, as part of the services. Yeah, I'm just going to ask that if there's a fee associated with that. Yeah, that would be that. We did one on Bethel Mountain years ago. Yes, we did one on Bethel Mountain. The only yeah. thing yeah. is, like, this is prime time for for traffic yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. to have it out there sooner would be later, because if it goes out in December, it'll be a couple of vehicles. Yeah. Or hunting or something. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's, yeah. it's possible she will not be able to do it this fall. Right. Um, which is that your question? Yeah, I was going to say what time because in summer's business. Sure. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unlikely that she's going to be able to do it that quickly. Yeah. Um, so it might be something that's supposed to be postponed for a year. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe that's in science or something, but you can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think there's anything. I didn't find anything that says you can't put up a sign that said, you know, caution, you know, pedestrians on the road, slow down. Yeah. You know, you can't have to do something that will require an ordinance. Yeah. Is we that only, something temporarily? Can only the town put up a sign? Can a private person put up a sign? Well, people put signs up in their yards all the time asking mm -hmm. people to slow down, kids that play, stuff like that. Thank That's you. That's what I know so far. Um, and then can, last, can, you, can you ask her when she when she can do that traffic yeah, study yeah. and then report that back to, to us? So that that I just wanted you to say that right. you wanted keep, me to Keep it going. Yeah. Okay. Can do that? Last thing is, I'm sorry, Dan snuck out. Oh. Because uh, we have this map of the village uh, designation area. And each of the buildings within the town, the village center, have to be classified according to whether they're uh, just residential, combination of residential and multi-use uh, or strictly commercial. And they have the information from when this was done last time, but it needs to be updated and the current data checked. Uh, I can't really do that, or I can't do it by myself since yeah. most of the stuff I don't know. 
and they're very anxious to get this stuff back right away because there's some uh, segueing between um, this this application and the municipal uh, planning grant. One has to be sort of far enough along in order for the other one to be boosted, have a higher, you know, get more points when they submit the municipal planning grant. So the fellow was doing this with me at Two Rivers. It's very anxious to be able to put this map up towards the end of this week. So did you have a list of the, the buildings there? That They're all here. Yep. Did I sent sent this out to you and to Dan asking, you know, whether they could either one of you or both of you could yeah, I think work with me or somehow. I mean Joanne and I can do some of this, but someone yeah, like at the planning from the planning commission really needs to look at this and say, Yeah, it's all it's all good, it's all right. Yeah. Okay. So Yeah, we'll do it. Who should I be asking? Holding your hands will come see you. No, no, no. Give it to us. Give it to Joyce. Work on it a little bit as we go along, okay. and then we can we'll just on. compare at the end. Mm -hmm. That's on. Compare with. Well, we will call Dan in, but everybody yeah. should look at it too and yeah. say yes. Yeah. This is definitely yeah. commercial, show it residential. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so you know, it's way that. I have a question for you, John. Uh, many years ago, there was a a, a talent center was uh, designated as such. Right. And is that what you're working on now? Yeah. It's, a, it's a new application for the same thing, but there have been some changes. Going to change? Sorry? Is it going to be a change? In the I don't know. I've it, been involved in it, that. It, it lapsed, and now we have to reapply. It lapsed? It How lapsed. Did you do it? There was a five. There was a five-year period that is designated for, and for whatever reasons, it the renewal didn't meet certain time frames. It was so. because Two Rivers required the town plan to be oh. updated first. Right, there were new before requirements. Before we could submit. And they could not complete the completion of the new town plan in time for the deadline for when this town center designation expired. So they said, don't worry about it. It's a little extra work to file a new application, but that's what you have to do. I thought it has to be done every number of years. Yes, yeah. it gets renewed every five now years. Now it's longer. It's, yeah, it's gone up to ten. Oh, no, they extended it seven, seven, seven years. Seven. Seven. Yeah. They extended the term now. It's a little longer. I understand. Yeah. And it's all on state highway. Uh, Not all of it. No, I realize. That's in Tide Creek. Yeah. No, but it's in town center. And so state the highway goes I, through the middle of it, but it's separate than from the highway. It's more the yeah. designation of the economic right, right, area. Right. Yeah. And it's very important to have it yeah. designated. I did not know that it will expire and that we all of us are not in a town center. No, it did. Well, <laughs> we're just out in the sticks now. Yeah. What else do you do? And it's right. slightly expanded now. Yeah, it is it's slightly already, expanded. Okay. We walked it and, and adjusted the reality of what is happening in the town center. So when you said it's expanded, how far each way? I mean, not very far, still, but... Uh, it's not very far, but it did, it, go, it did go further north because of the fire department and the park and ride. Park. That extended it all further north. And how far south of the And it, it, it extended down to Peabine the Drive to accommodate the commercial activity now in the renovated um, freight house. Okay. And it goes as far south as the school? about there. So, yeah, the school. Yeah, the school yeah, the and the medical school. center. Yeah. I think that's oh, where it ends. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, is it still so bridge to bridge? Sorry? Is it still bridge to bridge on 100? I think so. No. Basically. No. No. It's not quite. South no. It's not quite. Kennedy? Yeah, Bob Kennedy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Joan. So, we'll, um, we'll work on that. Everybody's here from the library. The constables, um, Cooter, you got any um, updates, questions? All I really got is I owe Dave an apology. He did have a driveway permit, covert permit that I had not found. And other than that, that's about all I've got. We were about ready to get our uh, new truck. Well, I wasn't going to say anything <laughs> until we do. Until we do. There's still time that something could go wrong. <laughs> well, I have a question on highway, and then also, I'm so glad that the town crew has opened up a cat basin uh, at the outside the corner of School Street, uh, 
and uh, whatever it is, Park Street maybe, or Mountain View Road, and so forth. But meanwhile, those cones are not going to be permanent, I assume, and I, I, I don't mind anything, but I'm sure you're going to put a grate over that uh, excavated ditch, some kind of a grate Which that you will, may have to pick up every five years to clean. I hadn't given that any thought. Yeah. Uh, well, the cones are temporary. Well, yeah. And so forth. I see. I, I love that it, that is working. And by the same token. But if I put a grate there, I'm going to catch stuff. <laughs> yeah. You mean like beavers going up street? No. And so <laughs> forth. <laughs> but but uh, you're well, always I'm just, thinking I'm weeds down the street. I've got like a grate over your ditch, which is a fine job. Over so, the whole so day. Well, the outlet of that culvert. It was it is probably yeah, was some pretty good size. Like if anybody's walking at night or something yeah. and they you step know in about there, that's a broken ankle. Yeah, well, I do. I mean, it's obvious from the erosion that pipe's working now. <laughs> and I was visioning well, uh, just some No, and that pipe is still not clean. Still not <laughs> no, I'm not surprised. <laughs> you have a fire chief right behind you. The ceiling is coming off the grass. Uh, that is the erosion. The pipe is still, it'll come eventually, but <laughs> we have to dig on it every few days, <laughs> every other time it rains or something. But yeah, I guess we could probably put something there. I'll have to give that a thought. I have one more question on the highway, and that is the ripples that apparently the grader is, is constructing and the ripples meaning cross road, not, not the washboard. I know washboard. I've always lived on it. However, the ripples is something that the grader is creating, and it goes back many years to our old grader, and now the new grader is doing the same thing. And somebody like you that knows a lot about surfaces uh, ought to look at these ripples on a flat, not on a hill, on a flat. I know about the hills getting washboardy, but I think we've had this discussion before, Kuda. Is there a, 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 a mole board problem? It's a new grader, remember. And, or is it an air pressure problem or going too fast? There's three things. The ripples. Uh, and I think it's none of the above. <laughs> oh, what does make them? I think it's the, the road is so hard, it makes the mole board, it makes the whole no. grader chatter yeah. when you're make, putting I your understand. cut in. I understand. I'll show you ripples someday. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> You don't and I sat it. in the grater and felt it shake, man. When you're digging, you're trying to put 14 feet of moldboard down into the ground, Ooh. and the ground is trying to push it out, and that's exactly what's happening, and it gets to chattering. Yeah, well, this happened before you, Cooter. I understand. By the same token, there's some way of grading down and getting those ripples out well, and not the, recreating them. That blade it, you're looking at with the teeth on it? Yeah, a sky fire blade. A sky fire blade. I'm looking at a sky fire blades and that may do that. I know it will. But it's also expensive. Very expensive. <laughs> I know that. So I have to figure out where that money Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. one is I walk and two is I drive a pickup. And I can see and feel ripples in both those instances. I can see them too. I, I'm, I'm I sure you do. If you drive the road, you will. I understand. If, Thank you. If you grade in the water content of the road, the moisture content is optimum, you don't have that problem. That's right. Yep. We can't grade all our roads in those two days a year. You say that's all you grade them? Yeah. No. no. There's only about two days a year where your moisture content is I understand perfect. that. That is correct. And we can't only grade <laughs> so many miles a road no, a day. No, no, no. I understand. However, the roads haven't been graded for years, as you know. Uh, they've been scuffed over. And this is a part of a scuffing issue, I believe. It's not a grading issue. And so if you, you know the difference. You don't, you don't dig up there. You just dig a small windrow. Anyway. I would have to have this discussion. We're both just making a list of the places that need that and, you know, trying to concentrate on those when the conditions are optimal. What's that again? The places 
that Marv's talking about, make a list of them, and try and hit those on the, you know, when the conditions are optimum. Instead of trying to do the whole road, just go do, you know, do the that's, shitty ones. That's not a bad idea. Just take two days and run around and do those. And then come back and try and do the best you can in the time you got before it gets so dry that you can't do anything and you end up with what you got. When you're running around with a grader, running around places with a bleeding ear, you're not good. It you're wasn't gonna, a problem before. You're going to fall further behind if you don't do a road, road by road. Well, it wasn't a problem before. I've seen that grader come in for launch. In the past. Well, moving right along. Yep. Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is, thank you for doing some shoulder work. There's a lot more to be done. One step of the dawn, right? One right. step of the dawn. So I believe the, the mowing is, is started. Mm -hmm. It seems I saw a bunch of equipment out behind Mike's and it's not in the yard anymore. So, um, so you, you, you know that we have a contract to hit all the town roads. Yeah. 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 So right. I believe yeah. that's very the beginning. Yeah. That's the beginning. Really yeah. Can I just ask something? About this piece of equipment that you need, how much is it? Uh, I think that blade is going to be around ten thousand dollars for the blade and the extra bits. So, is that something that um, gets put to consideration for the budget then? Well, it definitely would be something to add to the conversation this, this winter when I mean now we're moving into the budget we figured out last winter and we're using that through this winter so uh, I kind of got it in my mind that to wait until the end of the physical year and see where we stand and maybe we can find that somewhere in the budget it's going to depend a lot on the winter Somebody else had a question about this. No, I'm good. All right. Really? <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah. Terry, we kind of talked a lot about the um, water and sewer with the septic system. Is there any, anything else that you want to add to that? No. All right. Um, That's pretty much, um, oh, yeah. oh yeah, wait a minute, you do have something. It came back. Yep, it did. <laughs> so the process for not getting uh, roadside mowing is just put up some flagging. Because I really don't want all that shit that comes in with roadside mowing on my property anyway. I pull that crap every year. Put up uh, some, yeah, some flagging. Sure. Okay, right at the beginning of my property yeah. and right at the end of it. I will tell them. Flag it and maybe, okay, I'll flag um, it. Talk to Mike and let him know what that flagging means, or I can make a point of that. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. I'll take care of my property. Now we, Martha, you have a question? I just had a question about roadside mowing as well. Am I correct that our town crew does Bethel Mountain Road all the way up to the top, or is that? No. Because it's a state, I thought it's a state road, right? Isn't it? Or isn't it? The town crew doesn't do it. We, we're hiring out. We're hiring out. Private contracts to do it. And will that be done before we do it? Yes. Yeah. It's, in, it's, it's the starting the process now. Okay, well that's what I thought you meant by when you said... It started on the north end of town. Okay, no, well, that's fine. I just wondered if that's the road I drive every day to so work, so I'm noticing that one. <laughs> so uh, a, a month ago or so, we, you put in the paper kindly a, a, a request for people that had um, problem spots that they thought needed mowing or spots that they didn't want mowing. Did we get many Did get responses response? from that? No. Mm -hmm. No? So, mm -hmm. no. Mark came in and talked about it. Mm -hmm. All right. It probably wouldn't hurt you. Well, I don't know if I think Dave did this Dave, do you have something? Yeah, I got a couple of things. Uh, one is pretty much unfused now. Cooter, I thank you for that. Um, and another one is um, uh, we got water coming in uh, uh, in one of my driveways that I manage up in Great Hawk. I know it's being. You, the town is inheriting the problem, 
I understand that. I can see where the problem's coming from. But nonetheless, it's coming off the town road and washing out one of my customers' driveways. And it just started probably, I don't know, let's say a month ago. Um, and it's right at the top of Sparrowhawk. It's coming down off the upper Sparrowhawk Road. And uh, it's coming down the town road and coming across and washing out one of my driveways. That's going to have to be fixed now. Which, so coming off of Upper Sparrow Yeah, upper, it's coming from Upper, upper Sparrow Hawk. It's a private road, right? That's right. I know you're, in, so you're inheriting the water. I get it. Yeah. But uh, nonetheless, it's coming off the town road. That is town road, <laughs> which is uh, washing out one of my driveways. And, and it has to be fixed now uh, before winter because of the, it's coming right across. And it's something new. It, it hasn't been doing this all summer. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's the way they graded it up there I, or, or what. I, I don't know. But uh, I'd like to... It's got to stop because if we get a good downpour, it's going to take that driveway right out. Are you familiar with this spot? I have looked at it. Um, I, I think we can go up and ditch around the corner and try to catch the water coming off from Upper Sparrow Hawk. It, it's fairly new, so I, you know, it's a new one. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to make any guarantees. I mean, I'm going to make an effort. Right. I looked at it this weekend. You see the driveway I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 Uh, Patty mentioned it to me the other day. And yeah. A good rain, it's that driveway done. Uh, I mean, a good trip would no, I'm just not going to make any guarantees. All right. Before or after the cul de sac? Before the cul de sac. I'm below the cul de sac. Huh? I'm below the cul de sac. Well, yeah. yeah, okay. okay. But the walk problem starts above. Well, that's, that's the thing of it. That is a town cul de sac. Yeah. And so forth. Well, I think if I go right at the edge of the pavement and start my ditch or end my ditch up there it, I think it'll catch a lot of the water coming off that road but it's I don't about. Catch the water. I don't know for sure unfortunately if you go up upper sparrow hawk which I know it's private it, so the water's not getting to the ditch it's coming right down the road and so therefore it's not getting to the town yeah. Yeah. because it's coming right down the road so, <laughs> but I so don't know is that, that um, so is that um, is that uh, road on the control of the, the hog? Yeah, the hog association. Yeah. Yeah. Brought that to their attention? I haven't brought it to, I mean, because it's not, it's because, I mean, I got the town issue. I mean, I'm, I'm below that. The town road, now the town should talk to Right, yeah, so, you know, I'm 100 yards below that. The town water is like I say it's unfair for the town to have a problem like that because the water is coming down the road well, not the road's been there for a while and this is a new problem this is a new problem something so, different I know as the water is running in front of their, their driveways up there yeah. it's not getting to the ditch yeah. so <laughs> but that's you know private sorry okay so put the culvert put across before the cul de sac would that take that water and dump it down below I suppose it'd want to be a big one how big most big than 18 oh yeah Oh, really? Yeah. That was water. Oh, 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 oh. So there's houses all down the side of that road. You're going to want to aim that a little care, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then you'd want to see where it's going from there. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just say, uh, unless there's somebody up there you don't like. You know? yeah. All right. Um, I think we've covered it. We're going to pay some bills and thank you all for coming out. Is it doing bingo? What? Is it doing bingo? I haven't heard anything else new, but um, if you um, do have a, if you want to um, inquire, that we have a contact for the the um, the lawyer that's brought the suit. If you want to ask him, um, I you know, if you want to come up, I can give you that. No, I'm not asking you. Well, that's, that's what I got. I got the information. I don't have any I don't other think information. It's too much to ask a question and get an answer. You got an answer. Yeah. I was, thought I'd be generous and give you a little more information, but if you don't want it, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Thank I'm you. Just need to know if there's anything. That's all. Yes or no? I said no. Okay, great. Thank you. Jim, can you advertise for uh, for our personal? We haven't advertised for it. We're um, do yourself a favor and get on it. Yeah, we're, um, we're we've dealt with it every year, so yeah. do it. <laughs>
snow's going to be here before we know it. Yeah. No, we've been a lot of other ads from other towns out there right now. Yeah. And I saw in, uh, recently, um, I think it was on CX, they were talking about a lack of applicants and various job openings, and one of which was that kind of thing, both yeah. statewide. So I think he's. Yeah, no, it is definitely. I think it's good advice. Anything. Thank you.